Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. The amount of evidence that we have been able to compile to date that shows something very different about Antarctica than what we're being led to believe should be able to stand on its own as proof that there needs to be a much higher level of investigation into this region. But I found something else, and it has to do with these ancient maps that we have been looking at. This idea that the continent has been frozen for tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years, is bunk. And ancient map makers knew this. Now, the reason I brought up this map is that it's a representation of what the continent would have looked like had there not been these massive ice sheets. It's my opinion that an event happened in the 1600s that completely changed the uh, face. I'm not saying there wasn't any ice and snow in the region, but what we see now is not what it was even as far back as 1500, and I would like to show some more proof for this. It has to do with this new map that I found, and it's not new in the sense that it was made recently, but it's new in the sense that I haven't seen it, and I don't think most of my audience has seen it. It has to do with this region called Patagonia, which is, of course, southern Chile, southern Argentina, that region. There's a word that this particular map maker put on here that I think is very interesting. Gigantum Regio, meaning Royal Giants. Now that's strange. Gigantum Regio? And of course they even took the time to depict it here. These beings that were look like twice the stature of a normal man, which even if you took the smaller stature of um, the native Indians of the region, which is about 5'2", five, 5'3", five, that would still make them 10 feet tall, 9, 10 feet tall at least. Then there's this map, and this is really the smoking gun map for me. 
Now, it's an old map, and it's not that it's super accurate as far as the navigation part, but in these old maps, they drew pictures of things they saw, things that um, impressed upon them, you know, what represented that region. And I'm going to zoom in here just so that nobody mistakes what I'm looking at. Down here is a palm tree. Now, the southern tip of South America is brutally cold. Brutally cold. It's the highest it usually gets down here. I mean, they've had some record days that have gotten up into, I think their record is 80 at one point, but for the vast majority of the time, it's 60, maybe, at the warmest. It's very cold and very inhospitable, Tierra del Fuego. There's no way, there's no way palm trees. Absolutely not. Not now. But this map is from the 1500s. How could there have been palm trees if the weather was then what it is now? This would represent a very different thing now. Also, from the region, here is another old map. And what we see here is not the natives of the region, but we see what look like European men with long white beards. And it says once again, and this is Latin, it says, this land is inhabited by giants. Now that is, uh, and of course, this is the same region. This is the passage, allegedly, that Magellan had, let me zoom back out here, had found through the region. This is an actual photo of the natives down there, taken around 1900. And as you can see, they are wrapped in blankets and it's freezing cold. Yet what do we see in this map? We see in the 1500s, People walking around in short, summer-like clothing. No shirts. Here's another actual photo of the region currently. Very cold. These, what we can describe as uh, classical Native Americans. What we would expect to see. They look very much like Native Americans from up here, North America. Now, here's something that should blow your mind. I know that the stories of mermaids, all that kind of stuff, is a lot of the invention of bored sailors. But I want you to look closely in the right hand of the lower mermaid as I zoom this in. What is she holding? Why would an ancient mariner or the person that they were commissioning to paint this have drawn a picture of a flying saucer in the right hand of a mermaid? Could it be that these people were seeing the exact same thing down around Antarctica that we have been seeing in our skies? This, to me, is just another nail in the coffin for the story that these things are coming from outer space. They aren't. The things that we see in our skies that we call extraterrestrials or UFOs are not extraterrestrial at all. They're coming from our deep oceans and they are coming from the land of Antarctica, what we describe as Antarctica. I think it's the mythical land of Magaya Nika, only afloat. Here's another map that depicts the exact same thing from a different artist. So how could two artists have decided to get this so totally wrong if this is the case.
Now here, once again, this is another map of the same region. And this is taken from a book. It was a picture I had to get. There's no way to literally order the book online. There's a copy of it at the University of Florida, and I thought about driving the 63 miles over there just to get the book. But once again, it shows giant European-looking individuals occupying a very lush, green, warm environment. Now, one map maker could get it wrong, maybe two, but three? See, this is the allegation that I have been trying to make for so long about the region, is that this idea of it being um, millions of years of ice, it just isn't true. It couldn't possibly be true. The basic laws of thermodynamics would prohibit it. And that's, I probably should do a separate video just on that, about entropy. Things in the world, in a closed environment, will, will always gravitate toward the highest state of entropy. Meaning that they will, ice will gravitate toward becoming water, water will gravitate toward becoming steam or a gas. It's just the way it is in a closed system. I've said it before, take an ice cube, put it out on the counter, and it will eventually become a puddle of water and then eventually again become just water in the air. And we are a closed system that, it, that we could have this giant area down here be solid ice in this quantity for such a long time is ridiculous. And a couple things I wanted to show you that I haven't shown you before that I think you'll find very interesting. And that you can see this one in the low res. And I wish I would have shown this before because it was one of my first discoveries. Now this is kind of hard to see. But in this area, there are rectangular clouds over Antarctica. Now this area doesn't ever uncover in high res. But what in the world would cause this? Giant rectangular clouds. And we've seen them over North America and all sorts of places in the world. But if there truly was at one time down here a civilization, if it was a temperate environment, which even science has said that's the case, I'm just debating the time frame, and it was covered in ice, there would be a massive amount of decaying material underneath, right? Well, what do we know about decaying material? Decaying material creates heat and it creates pressure. So that could explain a lot of the vent type things that we are seeing on the surface of Antarctica. They've talked about this massive increase in temperature over the continent. I wonder if there's just these giant methane releases going on. And I will show you one thing in high res and I defy anyone to explain it naturally. Let's see if I can get it to show up. Okay. At the foot of this mountain is this perfectly rectangular area that has sunk into the ground and it's almost perfect in its size. There we go. That's a better picture of it. Right here. And I've measured this out. It's about four acres, so it's not huge. But what possibly, what natural thing would create a four acre field that would just be a depression in the ice and snow? I could think of a lot of the things that mankind would create that could do this. This could have been a settlement of some kind. Maybe they had dug an area down lower to create some kind of a reservoir for irrigation of this size. I can, you know, and there's even this straight structure that almost looks like 
pardon me, looks like some kind of um, piping or tubing irrigation that goes down here. And it's, you know, it's structures like this that just look like ventilation for the methane, for the heat. And it comes down to another structure here, but 12 and a half minutes, I will leave it there. But ancient maps show clearly, at least clearly to my mind, that there was something very, very different about that continent. And how we see modern images doesn't really agree with that. Noah and giants? If something happened in Antarctica, would it not make sense that the giants would have migrated, perhaps north, through Tierra del Fuego? I mean, we know what we see in Peru, right? With the Nazca Lines and Machu Picchu. And why would there be palm trees in a region that's ice freaking cold? But anyway, like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you and thank you so much. Hot time, 12 o'clock and six miles. What is this tech they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Crimson King. Isn't the land a site off-world, sir?